everyone, I'm Noreen and welcome to my kitchen and another installment of What's for Dinner. Tonight we have a diner inspired blue plate special hot hamburger plate. This is totally a southern tradition and no self-respecting southern diner would leave this off the menu. So tonight we're going to show you how to make a classic hot hamburger plate. All right, we're gonna go over all of the ingredients for our hot hamburger plate, and they are simple and few. What I have is two pounds of ground chuck, and you want ground chuck because it has a little bit more fat in it. This is an 80-20 blend, and I like it for its flavor, and I like it for the unctuousness of the meat. I find when I use the grass-fed beef that is like 93% fat-free, it just makes a hockey puck and not a really delicious hamburger, even on the grill. You want a little higher fat content. Um, what we're also going to use to make our gravy is four cups of beef stock. This has been made with beef bouillon powder and a splash of my favorite kitchen bouquet. We're also going to need a quarter of a cup of flour. Then we're going to season this meat up with a teaspoon each of onion powder, garlic powder, and cracked black pepper. And I have two tea, this, I'm sorry, I have a teaspoon of steak seasoning and a teaspoon of good old fashioned seasoned salt, whatever is your favorite. So what we're gonna do now is we're just gonna put this meat in a bowl and we're gonna get these other things out of the way. And we're just gonna season it up with all of these good flavors. And we're gonna get our hands in there and we're gonna mix it up just like that. Nothing else, This we're not making a Salisbury steak here, we're making a hot hamburger and we're gonna make gravy to put on it after we fry them up in our hot skillet. I have my skillet on the stove and it's heating up. And it's getting nice and hot so that when we put these burgers in it, it's just gonna sear them and it's gonna be perfect and it's gonna give a nice crust on the outside. Okay, I'm going to divide this up into six patties. So we're making third pound burgers and I'll do that and I'll be right back. All right, we're going to go ahead and cook off our hamburgers. I don't know if I can fit four in here. I don't think I'm going to try. I think I'm just going to stick with three. You may have to do it in batches, but we're going to go ahead and cook these off. I'm going to do these about five minutes per side, and then I'm going to flip them. Remember, your meat is going to tell you when it's ready to flip. If you come down here and try and, and flip this, it's going to stick. As long as it's sticking, it's telling you it's not ready to be turned over yet. But when it comes up nice and easy from the pan, then you can go ahead and flip it over. That means all of the, the fat and the protein have gotten hot enough and it's formed a nice crust and it's ready to turn over. So I'll be back when it's time to flip them over and show you what they look like. All right, my pan was nice and hot and these are ready to flip over. And that is the crust that you're looking for right there. Just like that. Now that one, that one's gonna be the problem child, but that's okay, we can flip it over later. These uh, cast iron skillets, if you're not familiar with using one, a lot of times they will have a dead spot in them <laughs> where it doesn't get as hot as the rest of the pan. So the longer you have your pan, the more you'll get to know it and you'll know where that spot is. And I know that my has a not so hot, hot spot right here. So. We're gonna let these cook until they're done in the middle. I'm gonna cook off the other batch and then we'll come back and we'll make the gravy for our hot hamburgers. All right, our burgers are done. I set them off to the side on some paper towels to drain and I drained all of the fat out of the pan. I washed the pan out to get any burnt brown bits out of there because they're gonna make your gravy taste really acrid and not so good. So I've returned a few tablespoons of the rendered beef fat back to the pan. I have it on a medium high heat and now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna add in the majority of my flour. Now this is a Wondra flour so you can use whatever, you can use all purpose flour, doesn't matter. And I'm gonna go ahead and add all of it. I just wanna make sure there was enough fat there to handle it. I 
and there's no need for me to brown this because it is an instant flour. Now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna add my four cups of beef stock. And I'm just gonna whisk this. And I apologize to those of you who do not enjoy the sound of the metal whisk on the metal pan, but this is how I do it and uh, I apologize. You can just turn your sound down. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to continue to stir this until the gravy thickens and then I'll be back and we'll add the hamburgers back to the gravy. We'll simmer them for about five minutes and then we'll serve these. All right, our gravy thickened up nicely. If you have to add a little more flour, go ahead and do that. If you're not using one drum, make sure you mix it with water first and then create a slurry and then just put the hamburgers back into this gravy and let them simmer for a few minutes. Now it's time to serve this up. So we'll meet you back at the counter and we'll finish this up and we'll show you what this hot hamburger plate looks like. All right, here's our hot hamburger plate. I've plated it up with some mashed potatoes, some green beans, our hot hamburger and gravy and our sauteed mushrooms. And I know that Rick is really anxious to give this a try. You ready? Mm -hmm. I know. Mushroom, hot hamburger. What do you think? Mm. I'm gonna eat too much. <laughs> he always says that. I'm gonna eat too much. Oh, that's good. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness, that's good. Oh, yeah. You know, it tastes like a little meatloaf on a plate. Um, just in that gravy, but you didn't have to go to all the trouble of putting eggs and breadcrumb and all that other stuff in there. These are really good. And like I said in the open, no self-respecting Southern diner would be without this on their menu. And really it's not exclusive to the South. It's all over the place. A hot hamburger or chopped steak. Sometimes they call it chopped steak dinner. But this is totally a staple in every diner roadside restaurant, truck stop that you come to, you're gonna find something similar to this on the menu. And I don't know why we don't make it more often at home. This is really great for the middle of the week or just as nice for a Sunday dinner. It's really satisfying, it's simple to throw together, it's economical, and it's definitely comfort food. I'd like to thank you for joining me today so I could show you how I make a hot hamburger plate. I hope you liked it. And if you did, please consider giving me a thumbs up and if you're not already, please consider hitting that subscribe button. I know that so many of you come and watch my videos and you enjoy it, but you don't hit that subscribe button. And if you do, you'll get a little notification whenever I upload a new video. And you won't miss out on any of the real food for real people, real easy recipes that we present every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday right here from our YouTube channel and straight from our kitchen. So I hope you give Hot Hamburger Play to try real soon and I hope you love it. And if you do, be sure and leave me a comment down below and tell me what you think. And until next time, I'll see ya. All right, so there we showed you how easy it is to fry an egg with no oil or butter and how easy some burnt on cheese slides right out of this pan. That gives you some indication of how great this pan is as far as the non-stickability of it. Um, I'm really impressed. When I made the uh, macaroni and cheese in it, I'm also when I fried the uh, the pork cubes in it for my pork stuff.